Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Thank you all for joining us for our third official employability webinar here at IT Online Learning. So today we're going to be chatting a little bit about tailoring your CV, why it's important, why you should do it, and how you can tailor your CV, basically with the goal of increasing your chances of securing an interview with a specific company. Okay, so as with our previous webinars, please comment any questions that you have in the little Q&A box that you should see on your screen. And then if your query is still unresolved, unaddressed by the end of the session, the session I will definitely address it then. Okay, fantastic. So let's get into it. Now, let's start off with what does it actually mean to tailor your CV or what do I mean by tailoring your CV? So by tailoring your CV, all I mean is just to basically tweak it or to adjust it, to alter it slightly. And the goal of tailoring your CV is to make your CV more consistent with the job description and consequently increase your chances of, of securing an interview. So before we get into why it's important to tailor your CV, let's get into the crux of it. Let's get into the different areas and the different options that you have to do so, to tailor your CV. So if we are going to be using the same structure and the same format of the CV that we originally created in our first webinar, that is basically what we are going to be utilizing in today's webinar. So if you aren't 100% sure what exactly I'm referring to, I would definitely advise that you go back and watch the first webinar that we did. It is on our YouTube channel. Okay, so in our first webinar, our CV structure had a couple of roles just below your name. So those are roles that you are qualified to apply to. So in that first webinar, we discussed a good CV. And in that webinar, we had a structure that laid out the key roles that this Jane Smith might be suited for according to her skills and her qualifications. So those specific role titles were project support officer, junior project manager, and project coordinator. So let's say that Jane has stumbled onto a role and she's read through the job description and she's decided that she is really intrigued and she would love to apply for this position. But the role title is for a PMO analyst. So in this situation, all Jane would have to do to the specific section of the CV would be remove the least relevant of the role titles and then incorporate PMO analyst into her CV's header. So junior project managers and project coordinators usually have more to do with what the job description would stipulate that the role entails than a project support officer might. So that's naturally depending on the organization and the project that you are working on. So we're going to remove project support officer because it's the least relevant and incorporate that or rather replace it with the PMO analyst role title because that is a role that is still in line with her qualifications and her skills. Okay, so there we go. Now Jane's CV has a major keyword in it, and that's related to the role that she is applying to, and she would have otherwise not had that keyword in her CV if she had not tailored it. Okay, so your profile is also an absolutely fantastic opportunity for you to tailor your CV. So if we take a closer look at the job description that I used for this webinar, we can find kind of the key characteristics, and in general, you can find these that are traits basically that the company wants us to demonstrate in our application. So there'll usually be a little section on those job descriptions that say something like about you or what you can bring or our ideal candidates. And um, that's where you can find all of the soft skills that you would be required to bring. If there is no such section, do not fret. Just take a read through the job description in its entirety, kind of holistically, and you should be able to identify those skills relatively easily. So in the job description that I used, we had a little bit of an about you section, and that detailed accuracy, strong attention to detail, organizational skills, written and verbal communication skills, and the ability to engage with different audiences, including senior management. Okay, so now we've got all those characteristics, all those traits, all those skills. So what are we going to do with them? We're going to incorporate them. Okay, so instead of starting the profile off originally as we had it with a creative, motivated and self-driven individual or professional, we're then going to start off with a meticulous organized and engaging professional with extensive experience of communicating effectively with cross-functional teams. So what does that mean? It means that during Jane's career, she has had experience of communicating with individuals that had multiple varying functions or skills. 
So that's a key skill that's going to play a large role in the PMO analyst job. And you can also make that more specific by adding, including senior management. Again, just kind of aligning the job description to the CV that you've got. Okay, so I would like to take this opportunity to raise an absolutely crucial point. You should only be adding these keywords if you feel that they are relevant or that they are applicable to you. If you do not feel that you are an organized person, or let's say that you don't enjoy communicating with other individuals, maybe this isn't the role for you. Okay. And then another great place to tailor your profile if you're using the same structure and the same setup that we used in that first webinar would be the very last sentence. So as we discussed, that is where you would traditionally highlight the kind of organization or the kind of company you'd like to work for. So we've structured this to expand on your ideal company's values. So all you would do is read through the job description to identify the values that the company you're applying to stands for. That can also be kind of the mission, mission statement, vision, goals, objectives. You can use any of those and you can integrate those into your profile section as well. So if there are no values, you can also do some research on the company to find them. And if all else fails, you can use a statement like, um, a reputable organization that is passionate about delivering cutting edge technologies to the finance industry, if naturally that is what the company you are applying to does. So in this case, the job description contains a what's in it for me section that has helped me to construct an effective summary of the company at the end of this profile for Jane. Okay. Now, our next section that we can tailor is probably the easiest and the fastest place to tailor your CV and that would be the skills section. So if you've set up your skills the same way that we did in our sample CV, you can simply remove or edit the least relevant skills related to the job description and then incorporate the desired skills. So for example, excuse me, in the job description that I was taking a look at, the following skills were listed. So it was program reporting, program documentation, tracking actions, formal qualifications, such as PRINCE2, MOP and MSP, Microsoft Office Suite, Adaptive in PPM Tool Admin and Power BI. So those vary from basic to more complex skills, but let's take a look at how Jane handled this. Okay, so Jane might not have extensive experience in program reporting and program documentation, but all of us have done some form of reporting and some form of documentation. So what are we gonna do? We're going to add them to the hard skills because this is kind of a skill that you would gain from experience and as you're working through your career. Tracking actions, which is what's listed in the job description, is also kind of similar to monitoring activities or to task management, so we can add that to hard skills as well. We know that Jane has PRINCE2 as a qualification, but just to ensure that she has the maximum chances of securing an interview for this role, we're going to put the MOP and the MSP certifications into her profile section, and we're going to note that she's looking to gain these in the future. Okay, so additionally, we already have the Microsoft suite that is listed under technical skills, but just for the sake of consistency with the job description, we're going to add that in as well. Now for the interesting part. Next skills that we have are technical skills, and they are specifically Power BI and Daptive. So these are both tools that Jane has no experience with using. So what we're going to do is we're going to Google them both, and we're going to find out if they are highly complex programming languages or highly complex technical skills. And then we are going to find out what they actually are. So as it turns out, Daptive is an application that tracks resource management, it tracks tracks projects and, and programs, portfolio management, and way more. So there is a little five-minute tutorial on YouTube. So Jane watches it, and she learns kind of what it is, understands how it does the things it does, and also how to use it. So now that she's done that, she does the same thing with Power BI, and, and she kind of just watches a beginner's tutorial on YouTube. So now with a basic understanding of those two applications, Jane can add them to her technical skills with a very clear indication of her proficiency, which more specifically is very basic, but at least she does go into that application having an idea of the kind of program that she would need to use, and she also knows what it looks like and more or less how to navigate it, and that's how simple it is. So on the flip side of the coin, if the requirement was an incredibly complex application or if it was a programming language, 
it would be more challenging to add it with technical skills or add it to technical skills. So we would advise adding it maybe somewhere else in your CV, for example, your profile, as we did earlier with the MOP and the MSP cert certifications. That's not something that you can simply watch a quick five minute video on and then know everything about. So if it is something like that, what you can do is you can add it into your profile section and say that you are looking or very eager to learn more about that specific program, that specific certification or that specific skill. So if we were using SQL, for example. Okay, so now we have incorporated as much of the job description into our CV as possible. And everything that is highlighted are the sections that we have changed. So you can see how much of a difference it really makes when, in terms of just consistency between job description and CV. Okay, so now that we understand how that works. We're going to talk about why we've done this. And that's because of something called the applicant tracking system, otherwise referred to as the ATS. Okay, so an applicant tracking system is a software that's used by recruiters and hiring managers to automate or to almost streamline and triage the recruitment and hiring process. So it's designed to help companies effectively and efficiently manage the hiring process, large volumes of CVs that they receive, job applications. So the ATS is usually used to filter CVs based on keywords and qualifications, and then also maybe to track the progress of candidates throughout the hiring process. So an ATS can be used to pre-screen CVs, it can automatically sort and it can categorize CVs, and it can track communication with candidates. So some ATSs can also be integrated with other recruitment software like background check systems and onboarding software. Okay. Now, when a candidate submits their CV, the ATS scans the document for relevant keywords and qualifications. If the CV meets the criteria set by the prospective employer, it will be passed on to the hiring manager for further review. And if the CV does not meet the criteria, it may be automatically rejected. So that's why it is absolutely crucial for you as a job seeker to be tailoring your CV to the specific job you are applying for, including relevant keywords and qualifications. So a study by the ladders actually found that CVs that are tailored to the job that is being applied to actually receives a 30% higher chance of getting an interview. And this is even more important when you're applying through an ATS. It's also important to note that not all companies use an ATS, but the majority of large and almost mid-sized companies do. So it's estimated that over about 90% of large corporations use an ATS in their recruitment process. So to increase the chances of your CV being selected by an ATS, make sure to use keywords specific to the job that you are applying for and format your CV in a way that is easy for the ATS to read or to scan through. So if this is one of your first webinars that you have attended with us and you have not watched that initial webinar about how to create a good CV, just a couple of tips for your current CV. Um, for all of you who have used the template that we stipulated in that first webinar, your CV is already set up to account for the ATS and it is ATS friendly. Okay, but a couple of tips to make your CV more ATS friendly would be using the long form and the acronyms for any companies, any institutions or phrases, instead of just using one or the other. So for example, if you were going to say BAU, instead of just saying BAU, say business as usual, and then in brackets say BAU. Search engine optimization, in brackets SEO. Standard operating procedures, in brackets. SOPs. So this is also um, applicable to degrees. So for example, if you're going to say Bachelor of Arts, include BA in brackets at the end. And for role titles or individuals, we do see this happen very often, where individuals, instead of referring to the full role title of project manager, they might just say PM, and that takes a lot of content and a lot of substance out of your CV. So ensure that if you are making use of acronyms, you have included the long form version of a word or a phrase or an acronym somewhere within your CV. Okay. It is also of absolute utmost importance to make use of standard section headlines in place of more creative ones, unless it's absolutely necessary or if it's otherwise stipulated. So instead of saying where I've worked or what I've done, just use work experience or career summary. These headings should be really easy and very straightforward in terms of understanding them. 
Okay. Another tip is to try and submit your CV as a Word document instead of any other formats, unless otherwise stipulated once again. And that's just for ease of the ATS. So let's say, for example, that there's a specific font on your CV and that specific font is perhaps not loaded or it's not recognized by the ATS. If you submit your CV in a Word format, it can then replace that font with the default fonts and it can still read through the information you have provided, albeit that the information isn't as pretty as you would have originally hoped for. So that would be another point that I would, I would definitely suggest. Now, a great thing about the ATS is that on some job descriptions, you might find a list of keywords, and that might be above or below the job description. Um, and that could range from role titles to skills to locations. And that can make it so much easier for you to tailor your CV, because those are literally the words that the prospective employer is looking for in your application. So, for example, at the bottom of this slide, we can see a little extract from a D365 CRM CE Senior Technical Consultant role, and those are all of the keywords that they are looking for in an individual CV if that individual wishes to apply for the position. So, as you can see here, there are several variations of the same thing. So, there's Microsoft Dynamics CRM, Dynamic CRM, and then just Dynamics. So again, it's really imperative to ensure that you use the official titles of any technical skills and also expand on your acronyms. So you might set that up in your CV and say something like Microsoft Dynamics Customer Relationship Management System. And then in brackets, you could say Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So again, just expanding on those acronyms. According to December 2022 statistics, only 2% of people who apply for a job are interviewed in the UK. This is, of course, an average. It depends on how niche the position that you are applying to is. The average position in the UK attracts about 250 applicants. So that means that only five people out of 250 are interviewed. So this is why it's of paramount importance to be tailoring your CV and to maximize the opportunity that you have available at your disposal to tailor your CV. So put yourself in the shoes of a recruiter or a hiring manager. If you have 20 roles that you need to fill within the next five working days, are you going to sit and sift through every single CV that you receive for one of those roles, or are you going to rely on the ATS, which is a reliable software, to make an informed decision using the information that each candidate has provided on their CVs? That doesn't make recruiters lazy. It just means that they are usually under very strict deadlines, and the ATS is there to make their lives easier. Of course, if the CVs that are being shortlisted or screened are not suitable for that position, the recruiter can then go further down the list and find the the runners up, so to speak. So essentially an ATS is nothing to be afraid of. It's a technology that acts as an e-filing system and one that makes recruiters and hiring managers lives much easier. You can also use the ATS to your advantage as we've discussed today. So some questions we are asked quite often, especially when it comes to the ATS and tailoring the CV or tailoring your CV is, how regularly should I be tailoring my CV to suit the job description? So this is a very individual specific thing, and that's just depending on how much time that you already spend on applications. If you're working full time, it might be challenging to tailor your CV for every single role that you apply to, whereas if you're unemployed, it might be a little bit easier to do so. So personally, a strategy that we like to advise and I like to advise is take a look at how many roles you apply to on a daily or on a weekly basis. Now, if you apply to, let's say, five jobs a day, find the one job out of those five that really excites you, and then take an extra 10 or 15 minutes to tailor your CV for that role specifically. Now, once you're comfortable with tailoring your CV for one out of five applications, you can then move on to tailoring your CV for two out of five applications, and then three, and then four, and then eventually five out of five applications. Ideally, you should be tailoring your CV for every single role that you apply to, but it's not realistic to try and start that right now unless you have the time to do so. 
start with tailoring your CV for 20% of your applications and then gradually increase that as you go. So while tailoring your CV, you'll also see that the oh, that there's a kind of overlap in the, the roles you're applying to in terms of, of tailoring. So for example, let's say that you're applying for project manager and project coordinator roles exclusively. So the project manager CV you'll notice generally tends to have a bit more emphasis on things like team management, delegation, time management, organization, the project coordinator role, however, might have a little bit more emphasis placed on skills like detail orientation, liaising cross-functionally, scheduling, support. So once you have the basic skills for each respective role laid out clearly on your CV, it'll make it a lot easier for you to tweak or to fill in the additional information like company information and desired skills. The best way to view your CV is as though it's a form that has to be filled in for each application and you're using the bare bones of that existing structure to add the desirable sort of meat of your application or a meat alternative for the vegans and vegetarians that we have today. So you can have a project manager and then you can have a project coordinator CV template with information missing so that you can remember to tailor those specific sections or words for each application. So even if you don't apply for a role within, or rather, if you apply for a role, let's say within a smaller company that doesn't use an ATS, you can still maximize your chances of securing an interview by tailoring your CV if you do it right. Having all the keywords, or at least some of the keywords, or the majority of the keywords that they've used in the job of description on your CV will make you seem like the ideal candidate for the role. So another question that we get often is, what if I'm making a speculative application and there's no job description for me to work off of? Is it okay for me not to tailor my CV? So just a reminder for everyone um, who ever perhaps didn't attend our last webinar where we discussed speculative applications. So this is when there's no explicit job vacancy at a company, but you would like to place yourself in their sites as a suitable candidate. So you email them saying something along the lines of in much more professional terms, if you hypothetically had a vacancy, I would be a really great fit. And I'm very interested in filling that hypothetical vacancy. Okay, so if you're making a speculative application, you should know what the company is about, or at the very least what the company does. So while there's no application or rather no job description to go off, you can definitely still research the company more and find out what their values are. And consequently, you could identify what kinds of people that they are looking for. Okay, so let me put this into practice. If I were applying for a position speculatively, based on my qualifications, I would want to apply to a company called My Online Therapy. I mean, as a therapist, not as a client. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so why do I want to apply here? Because I'm qualified in psychological counseling, and I would love to help people grow. So when researching my online therapy, I find that they are a dedicated team. They are passionate about psychological therapy and the changes it can bring to people's lives. They're on a mission to make therapy accessible. They'd like to enable people to become the best versions of themselves so that they can build a life with greater meaning, fulfillment and purpose. They envisage a world where mental health is just as much about prevention as cure quality sets them apart and they are focused on creating modern therapy for modern lives. So what would I do with that information? I would incorporate those points into my CV. So perhaps what I might do is add this into my profile section because it would be challenging to incorporate such whimsical optimistic language into duties and responsibilities. So I would incorporate it into my profile section and maybe say that I'm looking to be part of a dedicated team that's passionate about psychological therapy and the improvements it can bring to people's lives through enabling them to become the best version of themselves. I might say I'd like to contribute toward a quality company focused on creating modern therapy for modern lives and a company that wants to make therapy accessible because I believe that mental health is just as much about prevention as cure. So naturally, the extent to which you'll incorporate the company's goals will depend on how much relevant information you can find and how much you can incorporate without sounding like you're copying and pasting. 
So the goal is to sound as authentic as possible when you are tailoring your CV for both speculative and for traditional applications. So if you have any questions, we are going to run through some questions that have run, uh, that have cropped up through the webinar. Um, if you guys will just give me one quick second. So a couple of the questions that we do get regarding the ATS is, um, does, the eight does the ATS shortlist for companies? So that's a really great question. As we did touch on earlier, while the older applicant tracking systems might not have very complex or technical functions, recent systems can actually shortlist, they can screen, they can even host video interviews, um, automated interviews, as well as any communications between the agency or hiring manager, as well as the candidates. So yeah. I see we've got another question. If I am not invited for an interview and I get no response, does it mean I was deleted? Okay, so that's a no. Most ATSs will actually store your information in an accessible pool, but they don't fully delete your information or your application or your details. So that's just because with a large enough database, recruiters are making it easier for themselves to pull candidates in the future that have maybe relevant experience and skills suited for those kinds of applications. So next, we will be sharing the recording to this webinar as well as the presentation. Um, so if there is anything that anyone has missed, you will be receiving that. But other than that, that's everything for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, be sure to follow us on socials to keep up with our upcoming webinars too. If there are specific topics that you would like for us to cover in future webinars, please feel free to comment, like, subscribe to the YouTube channel that we have, IT Online Learning, and we will gladly address those. Okay, well, thank you so much for attending everyone. I hope you have a fantastic day and we hope to see you at our next webinar. Bye.